Hey guys, thank you for coming and checking out the interviews that we are doing with many different guests all over the place. We talk about multiple things with them because the Fairy Tale Podcast is expanding out to more than just Fairy Tale, and we're very happy about that. But guys, I want to take this moment to tell you about our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash fairy tale podcast. Now, if you're listening to this interview on either our YouTube or our SoundCloud channels, I want to let you know that you're actually getting them a week late because they go up immediately onto our Patreon and then we release them publicly a week later. So if you'd like to get to all the goodies and extra content that we're putting out there, make sure to become a patron and it's really easy to do. We don't ask for like exorbitant amounts of money. It's just something that goes into helping to support the podcast itself so that we can continue running and expanding. Uh, we just recently lost our website uh, host and we're tr working on trying to get that back, but we can definitely use your help to do that. And we're trying to expand back out to getting back onto iTunes and to taking that money and helping people get to more cons so that they can actually uh, interview more amazing guests for you guys. And we can expand our reach and actually talk with even more and more people that we're fans of ourselves that we know that others are too, so that you can come and check those out. And perhaps we can up our mic quality uh, for all of our AWA interviews, I want to say that the way that we had to do everything, the room that we we're in, we had a lot of background noise from the AC unit. The audio quality may not be the best for Walker, who was our interviewer for AWA, but the majority of the stuff that was recorded, he's going to sound a little weird because the mic was facing away from him because we want to emphasize the person that we're interviewing, our guests that we're interviewing, should take the priority as far as the sound and audio quality. So you'll hear them a lot more clearly than you will Walker, but once again, there was an AC unit and we were trying to kill the background noise for that, and it made the audio sound a little weaker from his end, but we did boost it up so you could hopefully hear him clearly. Things like that can be fixed if we get better equipment, and that's another reason why we have the Patreon set up. And uh, guys, you can just drop a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever. We understand. If you're in a broke anime fan like we are, a little bit is fine. Uh, hi there, my name is Walker. I am with the Fairy Tale Podcast uh, at AWA 2017. As you, as I've said in the last two, this is going to be a recurring theme that I get everyone's names wrong. Uh, so I'm going to try my best okay. and feel free to correct me. Absolutely, Feodor Chin. Very close. Very yeah, close. Very okay. cl uh, Theodore. Theodore. Chin. Uh, just like Theodore, except with an M. Okay. And uh, but usually uh, people call me Theo. Um, of course, uh, if you're familiar with Spanish at all. Uh, it's spelled the same as feo, which in Spanish means ugly. So, <laughs> so, so yeah. So usually, I mean, you know, I, you know, I'm, it, uh, I do do a lot of voiceover, so I guess that makes sense. But you know, right? so, they always say you have a face for voiceover because uh, you know, count that. No. Yeah, no, I've heard that one before. My friends like, uh, you got a great face for radio. And I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> right. As a backhanded compliment. To <laughs> But uh, of course, you're 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 best known to most people, uh, or at least most people who don't specifically go through your resume right. <laughs> uh, as your work for Zenyatta in Overwatch. Yes, yes, I. I um, yeah. And talking about that briefly, because sure, as sure. people are well aware at this point, we like to talk about different things other than just all of your career. <laughs> um, but I will say this about the career. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Zenyatta. It is the only healer I really play because I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Mercy. I feel like Mercy's ah. overused, and I <laughs> have still not figured out how to play Lucio or Symmetra, so I just don't even right. bother. Um, but I'm I'm more or less I'm a Cree main myself actually. Oh, okay, uh, okay. So I'm a big yeah, fan yeah. of Matthew Mercer. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's the best. Uh, <laughs> Mercer is great. Um, so when you're on my team, you know I I as you say experience tranquility when you're. On the enemy team, I experience a deep-seated feeling of hostility. <laughs> I've heard that that uh, that yeah, Zenyatta does not uh, instill a lot of uh, Zen and peace, peaceful like feelings in uh, people <laughs> playing against him. You know, which is <laughs> which makes sense, I guess. But uh, you yeah, know, he's uh, he's a robot of the people. But but moving away from from that bit of your career, uh, yeah. one thing I, I as I was saying earlier uh, discovered before. We started this is that you actually uh, do a, a decent amount of writing. I do do some writing, and um, I think pretty much as any actor will discover as they're going through their career, um, at some point, rather than just waiting for the phone to ring or uh, you know 
for opportunities to pop up. I mean, you kind of have to create your own opportunities, and uh, hence that's when the, uh, the writing comes in. You get your uh, maybe creating projects for yourself, or uh, whether they be you know, screenplays or even just uh, sketches, which is more what I've been um, focusing on recently. It's uh, a lot of uh, sketch comedy, and so that's primarily what I've been doing with writing now. It's a uh, sketch comedy over at. Uh, Upright Citizens Brigade in LA, and also I'm on a, a house team at the uh, Improv Olympic West, IO West, there in LA. And uh, yeah, monthly shows, uh, just putting out some comedy content. But uh, but I have written um, it's one screenplay, a few pilots, and mainly, yeah, just as uh, potential opportunities, not only for myself, but maybe as for my friends and that kind of thing. And I, I have to say, I have mad respect for you for doing sketch comedy because <laughs> I have found that my one drawback in writing and talking uh -huh. is that I am an exceptionally long-winded individual. Oh, oh, yeah. So anybody who can condense a story and a punchline in like <laughs> two or three minutes is a hero to me because well, that is hard yeah, to yeah. do. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what helps. Uh, I um, write a lot of jokes on Twitter uh, and... That 140 character limit, which I, I hear they're, they're doubling, which I think is really stupid, but uh, <laughs> but that will teach you brevity, like to, 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 to be able to get a joke or a point across in 140 characters. It, it's a great, it's a, it's a great you know uh, obstacle to, to really you know, it, it, and and I, and I do I can be kind of long winded myself too. I, I you know, really love words, but uh, yeah, it, it really helps when you have a give yourself a succinct kind of like, I have to get this said. Maybe I should you know. spend more time on Twitter then. I, I, I tell guess. you, yeah. It's <laughs> worth looking into. Most of my tweets end up just being like, oh, uh, d d stream in 15 minutes, or oh, hey, guys, <laughs> check out this one video. <laughs> well, you know, that, that that's good too. It gets a point across. So outside, uh, uh, getting onto onto the writing, uh, you, yeah. you said you do uh, uh, sketch comedy and you also do improv. Mm -hmm. um, what first interested you in these, in these subjects? I, I've always enjoyed making people laugh. Um, and in high school, you know, I, I did the uh, drama classes, doing all the, you know, the, the school plays. And um, I think for me, maybe like a lot of people initially, I kind of had a dream of being like a Dustin Hoffman type, uh, just a very serious actor, uh, which, you know, I still enjoy. I love a good, you know, dramatic part. Um, but there is something, particularly with the live comedy shows that we do, um, really nice about, you know, getting that immediate feedback from an audience, and, you know, just, you know, making them laugh and you, know, you can feel that energy and it, it's good feeling. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm certainly open to, you know, any kind of arts, but, uh, but I guess comedy is a little more personally gratifying, in that sense, especially <laughs> in these times, you know, when we need all the laughs we can get, I think. So, uh, yeah, I hear you on that one. Yeah. Um, and and as I was as I was saying earlier about the uh, mad props for sketch comedy, uh, improv is another thing that I just have not been able to grasp. And I think hmm. that anyone who's able to pull that off is just, just to be able to, the ability to be given something and just run with it for sure. as long yeah, as you yeah. can. Yeah, is impressive. Yeah, well, I'll tell you to be honest with you, I, I do more sketch comedy than improv for that very reason. That I I can grasp the concept, but it is in practice it, it is it, it can be very difficult. And I I, I too admire the guys who can just go with it and just, you know, I mean, because it's a, it's a pretty basic principle that you just, as soon as you understand what the game of the scene is, it's just heightening. And, and the, um, the cardinal rule is if this is true, then what else is? And just keep taking it to a, a more absurd place. But it, yeah, I mean, it sounds easy, but yeah, once you're out there on stage, <laughs> yeah, it can be uh, <laughs> pretty scary. Yeah. And, um, Trying to think about other things to talk about now because oh, there's just like so little time to do this. <laughs> um, I guess uh, when it when it comes to dramatic writing, like um, you, you you said, you, you do enjoy a good dramatic role. Sure, um, sure. Yeah. So I guess my question would would then become um, in, in terms of drama, what what would be your preferential? Uh, genre of things because I know like some people with drama they like the, the, the noir style mm, where it's just mm -hmm. kind of like uh, dark and gritty yeah. and very intense other people like just the kind of uh, sappy emotional sure, drama sure. and other people kind of prefer the yeah. 
estranged form of drama where things hardly make sense, but it somehow <laughs> ties in. You know, I'd have to say, I do like, or I, I kind of tend to prefer how, when I, when I read, I, I often find myself reading more nonfiction than fiction, just because, I don't know, there's something about, like, oh, just learning something factual, um, or like something historical. So I'd have to say, in terms of drama, I would probably tend towards, um, like, Mad Men, I really enjoyed, even though it wasn't technically a historic, it was a period piece, but they would still sprinkle in a bit of, kind of like, um, I found this particularly in the last couple of seasons, uh, it got kind of Forrest Gumpy, you know, where it's like, <laughs> oh, you know, the moon landing, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, you know, a bit of that, but, but I like that, because, like, it, it gives you a historical perspective, um, and, and, and possibly you can learn things that you, uh, you didn't know about in history, and, uh, so yeah, I, I guess I you know I like like biopics or like historical pieces uh, like Selma last year or uh, you know um, yeah stuff like that I think is uh, terrific. And uh, and Mad Men too, it was a very unique perspective on the yes. time period because yes, correct. It, instead of being from the average everyday guy, it was uh, the perspective of these rich uh, advertising right, agents right, who right, right. pretty much ran the media. Right, right, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Um, what kind of uh, fiction do you, do you like? Uh, I'm myself. I'm I'm more into the. Uh, I, I I prefer the gritty noir. It's oh, it's okay. it's a nice, like. I, Are you looking forward it, to the, uh, it's, the new Blade Runner? Oh my gosh! Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> I've heard nothing. I I had to go back and watch the old. Like I, I'd never seen the first Blade Runner. So when I saw the the, the announcement for 2029, I was like, Oh, is that right? Yeah, I I had never seen it up until that. Like I'd heard people talk about it, and wow. I'd heard like jokes okay. a thousand wow. times, and I was like. I don't know why I've never heard or seen this movie. That's amazing. And so I went back and I watched it. I'm like, oh my god, how have I never seen this movie? <laughs> no, 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 I am a no, huge fan of no, Harrison tell me Ford. Which, which version did you see? Because <sighs> there's a, you know, I think theatrical release originally has the, um, the voiceover. Yeah, I think it was the um, and then the director's cut. I think. I think it was the director's cut because my, my my friend has a collection of DVDs and Blu-rays, yeah. and so I think the one he had was the director's cut. Okay. And I had, I was just watching. I'm like, how have I never seen this movie? I mean, I freaking <laughs> that, I've, I've seen I've seen yeah. Star Wars, Indiana no, Jones, that's, The that's, Fugitive. Yeah, how have a, I not that's watched? That's amazing this? to me. But uh, um, at least, yeah, you you've rectified. That. Yeah, I've rectified that <laughs> that that mistake. And now I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, no, I've I've heard nothing but good things. And uh, it, you know, the original Blade Runner, just visually too. I mean. Because people are always like, you know, we say, oh, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's like, well, these days it's, no, it's usually like Blade Runner. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. well, you know, it's like, yeah, because like he was the first one who came up with that that whole look, you know. Yeah. Like and, the, and, yeah, most like kind of sci-fi, post-apocalyptic kind of like look like Blade Runner. Yeah. You know. But, and uh, uh, and that was one of the, the things uh, when I, when I back when I was in uh, university for uh, film aesthetics class, uh-huh. that was one of the genres we covered for like, I think a month was yeah. the, uh, he, he dubbed it cyberpunk. And I was mm-hmm. like, uh-huh. and it was funny to me because at the end of the year, I, I actually reviewed uh, Trigun Badlands Rumble. And one of the things he showed in class was a clip from Akira oh, where it was uh-huh. the yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, fucking motorcycle gang going right, around. Right, and I was right, just right, like, right. So, <laughs> so you do mostly Western films, but this is the one Eastern film you're going to show. <laughs> All year, he's like, "Well, it's just a masterpiece." I'm like, "Well, I'm aware that it's a masterpiece." But... <laughs> yeah, oh, that's funny. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, noir is more my fa- like. I'm, I'm a big sci-fi, bu- as you can see. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Star Wars T-shirt. Yeah, a big, big sci-fi buff. Um, and I've seen things like uh, Battlestar Galactica, mm. Starship Troopers, sure, sure. Uh, Star Wars, Star Trek. Star mm. Trek. Uh, it depends on what I'm watching. Um, <laughs> Because I, I I love all the actors, uh-huh. but some of the writing is what kills me on certain series. Well, yeah, it, it is it is such a vast universe now. You definitely yeah. like I I admittedly um, am more of a Star Trek guy than Star Wars, but it's specifically the original series movies uh, two two three four and six. That's all. That's all you need to see. I think. As far yeah. As those movies go. <laughs> um, yeah, then for the next generation, first contact, and then the rest of them, I think. Are, eh. Yeah, my, <laughs> my director would argue for uh, Jean-Luc Picard, but I'm, I'm more of a big fan of Kirk because uh, it's not, I mean, granted, it's not my time period, I didn't grow up with it, but uh, one of my friends growing up was like, his he lived a very sheltered lifestyle, oh, yeah. <laughs> and his parents had like 
all these old TVs and VHSs uh-huh. and stuff like that. So he actually just sat there with the entire original series yeah. of Star Trek and watched it on a tube TV that he had built himself. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, he, that was me growing up. Uh, actually, <laughs> going up. After school, it would be on about 4 or 5 o'clock, and I'd just watch the original series over just about every day after school. Yeah, that, that <laughs> stuck with me, clearly. Um, I guess I have a weird take on things because everyone I've ever been around uh-huh. uh, has all these older pieces of, of, of film or television and cinema, and I just get stuck with those, whereas uh-huh. all my other friends are, like, watching the new stuff. Uh-huh. Like, all of my uh, friends growing up were, like, watching uh, Looney Tunes – or not Looney Tunes, uh, Tiny Tunes and, like, yeah. Animaniacs and stuff like that. And I was watching, like, the 1960s, 1970s, like, Looney Tunes cartoons because <laughs> I'm like, this is all my grandparents have and I'm just going to watch this. <laughs> so I guess it gave me a unique perspective on things and it, it, it made for an interesting – debate growing yeah, up. Yeah, for sure. Um, but that, that, that that's interesting uh, about the... With, with all, all you've done with writing and where it's taken you just from start to finish. Uh, well, I mean, I think, like, as I was saying, uh, you know, as an actor, you're lucky to be working, you know, whenever you're working, but you do have to... Uh, until you're in that position where they just start offering you stuff, you, you, you constantly have to be uh, trying to create uh, opportunities for yourself or, you know, particularly for um, minority actors, you know, I think uh, the opportunities aren't as uh, abundant. And uh, there's that. And also maybe telling stories from a, a different perspective yeah. that, uh, you know, Hollywood might not necessarily. And, and, and that's uh, a really great thing, thing to cover because, it's not often that we actually see things from a panoramic view. Normally, it's yeah. just a very central yes. uh, route that that everything likes to take. And uh, as fun as that can be with certain things, uh, other times it's a very closeted window that we get to look sure, through. Yeah. Um, but that's actually our time. So uh, thank you so much yeah, for thank um, you. Yeah. sitting down and actually talking with me. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. That was a great chat. I hope uh, uh, I hope, right. we can, I hope we can talk again sometime, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to schedule something uh, at another con at some yeah, point. Yeah, for sure.